Hello, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Eric Stilligoy, editor of Crop Life and Crop Life Iron Magazines, here again today with Laura Sawinski from El Paso. Laura, how you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? I am doing well. As is customary, I guess we'll talk a little weather, because in Ohio, of course, in the spring, it goes up and down like a yo-yo. Yesterday it was 81 degrees, and today it's 46, so... A oh. uh, little little bit of a difference. I suspect it doesn't quite swing as wildly in El Paso this time of year. Yeah, well, being that I'm uh, born and raised Buckeye, I, I feel your pain, but <laughs> glad I don't have to share it anymore. <laughs> Which is a subtle way of saying, yes, it's nice and sunny here, warm, I've got the windows open. <laughs> almost, almost. Sucks older than Ohio, I get it. All right, thanks for that, Laura. I'm feeling much better. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, listen, uh, I know last week when we were doing our video, we were teasing the fact that the USDA was going to be releasing their planting intention survey on right. March 31st. And we promised to give uh, an update on what that report said uh, in this week's video. So we'll start there. Um, and I'm happy to report that according to the uh, to the USDA, we're going to have 318 million acres of crops planted in 2023 uh, and of course we're mostly concerned with the major row crops uh, and for three out of the four uh, the news is actually good there's going to be increased acreage for those uh, just a quick little update here corn plantings are going to be up uh, four percent to 92 million acres uh, soybeans are going to be up slightly from last year to 87.5 million acres uh, and then wheat is going to be up to 49.9 million acres which is a nine percent bump from 2022's figures uh and in the cases of those three crops laura the reason things are going up of course with corn and wheat um you know the uncertainty i guess on the world stage when it comes to grain shipments coming out of uh, the ukraine and russia perhaps uh, means that demand for U.S. grown corn and wheat is expected to be stronger this year. So looks like growers are going to try to take advantage of that. And for soybeans, we've talked about it, uh, you know, the push towards renewable diesel. Well, huh? It is uh, definitely causing folks to look at soybean as a viable option to grow in their fields because it's like the end market is definitely going to be there for 2023. Right, right. Yeah, actually... Um... You did a wonderful summary, um, likewise, in the newsletter, our Crop Life newsletter. I just wanted to add a couple more items that stood up for me as well. Um, speaking of corn, as you mentioned, up 4% uh, this year from last year. Largest increases expected in North Dakota, and uh, producers there intend to plant 800,000 more acres than what they did in 2022. And... Um, in addition, the report from USDA found that planted acreage for corn in Arizona and Idaho will be the largest on record. So um, good news on that front as well. For the soybean sector, um, up slightly, um, but up nonetheless. Um, increases of 100,000 or more acres are expected in Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin with record high acreage expected in Illinois, Nebraska, New York, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Um, wheat up slightly. Um, no, I should say, let me um, correct that, up um, quite a bit, actually, uh, 9% in 23 versus last year. Uh, and as you mentioned, the one unfortunate uh, downtick was cotton. Um, Texas being the largest producing state is going to see a pretty sizable uh, decline, 18% compared to last year. Um, likewise, uh, California will see a little bit of a decrease in cotton production, while Arizona um, actually will see a little bit of an increase. So uh, overall, I think really good news. Um, I was... I was pretty um, excited to see that. And I think the big driver, as you mentioned, undoubtedly just ongoing global demand for these commodities. So that's the good news. Yeah. And I know you mentioned cotton, which I hadn't touched on because, yes, it was the one that 
add the bad news, uh, the planting is supposed to be down to 11.3 million acres, which is an 18% decline from 2022. I, I know that, uh, you know, we have weekly meetings with our editor editors on our sister publications. And I know David Eddy, who is our editor of well, American Fruit Grower, had talked about the fact that in California, because of the water shortages they've had the last few years, that growers have had to like maybe pick and choose what crops they actually grow. And he says they're going more towards the high value crops, specialty vegetables and uh, tree nuts in particular. And at that expense, of course, that acreage is coming that used to be cotton acres that is now disappearing from California. Right. So, yeah, right. that's unfortunate. But, um, yeah, like I said, overall, I mean, three out of four, it's not a bad, not a bad win percentage for the row crops. So we'll have to see how things actually pan out between now and, of course, the uh, the middle of June, because of course, as always, weather is the wild, ultimate wild card when it comes to crop plantings, and we'll have to see when in you know if, if there's any big issues as we go through uh, the growing season here in the spring. So, indeed, indeed, I yeah. know there were some um, big big news items this week. I'm going to let you take it away on that because I think you're better versed than I. Well, to a, to a point, again, uh, yeah, the big news items, of course, most of these fall under the heading of ag technology. I guess there's been a lot of activity in that area, in particular, the last year, year and a half, and doesn't sound like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. Basically, there's been a lot of the acquisitions being made. Um, we had one not too long ago where we talked about our friends at uh, C&H Industrial, which owns Case and New Holland. And they were purchasing uh, a company called Augmenta, um, which is giving them access to a, uh, I think they call it Sense and Act system, which is, um, you know, another one of these uh, in intelligent spraying systems that you can use to spot spray when you're doing uh, custom application work. Uh, but they've also now acquired a company called Hemisphere GNSS, uh, which is owned by a Chinese company. Uh, expecting to close the deal for that company in the third quarter of this year. But that company is a global leader in satellite positioning technology, which uh, CNH will be using to help move along its, uh, you know, electronic systems for sprayers and other farm equipment as we move forward. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. you know, interesting there. And then we also found out uh, that our friends at Agco, I've been waiting for this move, uh, Agco has now made a formal agreement with Bosch BASF Smart Farming. Uh, I guess they've been working together on and off since May of 2021, particularly in Europe, trying out the smart spraying solution system that they have, which again is another one of these systems that you can put onto a sprayer that can help spot spray the weed and you don't have to uh, do a broadcast apply. Um, this system then is going to be made available to the Americas and in Europe starting next year in 2024. Um, but we had a quote from Seth Crawford, who was a uh, precision ag and digital representative Agco, talking about this agreement. And he basically said, the progress we have made with Bosch, BASF, smart farming, in developing a sustainable solution that maintains productivity while improving profitability, helps deliver clean fields and maximum savings to those in the ag industry. So, again, um, we'll be seeing more of this uh, this partnership system coming into the marketplace next year. But hopefully, as we're attending summer shows and maybe into the fall, we'll start seeing some of the prototypes popping up. So, obviously, uh, you know, watch our videos come you know September, October as we're wrapping up those events and maybe we'll have some video and photographs and information to share that'll be awesome yeah i um when you said video i was reminded uh last week i believe it was we were talking about the ad retailer uh little visits that i um was happy to uh go on with our colleague eric davis uh gs long down in woodland california or excuse me in um yeah Yakima, Yakima, Washington, and um, Bro Bro West in um, Wood Woodland, and um, G G S Long was um, kind enough to send over some video clips for me, which I'm 
we'll include on on next year on uh, next year's next week or the following week um uh video cast but i was curious because uh when i was there i learned about their program to introduce sterile coddling moths um as a way to um you know, for pest pest management and uh, using drones to do it. And I was wondering how, how do they have a bag that trails then, you know, how does that do? And they, in the vi video, um, you'll see how they do it. It's pretty cool. And uh, again, you know, uh, a picture tells a thousand words, video tells a million maybe, <laughs> but uh, we'll be, be sure to share, share that in the com the coming weeks. So it's cool what they're doing. All right. Well, yeah, that's a good, that's a good, Nice teaser for next week's video. Get well, people I, tuning in to see uh, maybe a different use for drones. I had never heard of that well, type of usage. I know you were telling about me telling that to me uh, not too long ago. We were talking about your trip, and I'm like, that sounds fascinating. So I'm glad we'll have a video to share with our viewers. So yes, viewers, stay tuned for that. But for now, Miss Lord, it's time for your favorite segment of the show. Time for fun with number what i live for gotta tell you yeah. <laughs> and, and we gotta try to get you back on a winning streak here you uh you've had uh, no luck lately so i've got my fingers crossed for you this week so hopefully it's not right. be too hard <laughs> so this week's number solid number not a not a percentage not a dollar amount it is 300 okay and no, the answer is not a movie made by Zack Snyder about Spartans taking on, oh. um, you know, the Persian Empire back in the Greek days. That, although that would be a, a correct answer, it's not the one I'm looking for. So. <laughs> See, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, well, if you've never seen the movie, yeah, if you could break out, this is Sparta, all separate words with periods in between. With emphasis, I'm not doing it just. <laughs> this is Sparta! <laughs> Anyhow, 300 is your number. Okay. Is 300, A, is that the number of growers planting smart corn in 2023? Is it B, the number of grain barges now heading down the Mississippi towards New Orleans? Is it C, the average number of pieces of equipment used on farm for planting season? Or is it D, the number of excuses my son has given me this spring so far for not yet mowing our lawn? <laughs> you know it's spring when the when the D option goes to something about your son and mowing. <laughs> you know, if I had a dime for every time he gave me an excuse why he didn't mow the lawn, I'd be retired. So let's just put it that. Maybe we should fe feature those and see what you <laughs> saw the league. I love vote on those and see what their favorite <laughs> one is. Yeah, some of them are really good. Yeah, I'll have to share some of those. One of these future videos. So, but anyhow, what is your guess for what 300 is, what we're going for this week? I think I'm going with B, the green barges and root. <laughs> and by the look on your face. <laughs> no, I am sorry. It is not. No, the correct answer is A. Uh, to the number of growers planting smart corn this year uh, yeah. and, and and again since we were earlier talking about planting intentions i did run across an item that from our friends at bayer that said uh -huh. that they have 300 growers across the states of indiana illinois iowa and nebraska that are going to be planting the smart corn which is you know, yeah. some people may know it as the short stature corn. Um, yeah. but, um, they're actually, and that translates to about 30,000 acres that will have short stature corn on it here okay. in 2023. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, the fortunes for those growers pan out as we move through the growing season. And of course, we will keep everyone abreast of what we find out from uh, our friends at Bayer. Yeah, cool. I'm going to check into that further. That was a good one. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> that unfortunately, you didn't get it right. I know. I know. All we'll, right. We'll turn it around. <laughs> I know we will. So to everyone out there, if you celebrate, hope you have a happy Easter weekend this uh, this weekend. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. On behalf of myself and Laura Sawinski and everyone here at Rep Life, thanks for joining us. Take care. 
If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We will try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.